The burqa is a type of outerwear, which is a traditional garment worn by women in Muslim countries, in which not even their eyes are visible. It is a large enough coverlet, which resembles a spacious robe with long false sleeves, hiding the face and hair. It has a slit for the eyes, closed by a dense mesh, through which the woman looks. Most girls in burqas can be seen in the Middle East and Central Asia. The burqa was first used in ancient Egypt and later in other countries of Islam. Initially, it was worn by both men and women to protect the face from the scorching sun and the drying wind of the desert. By the end of the 19th century, only Muslim women began to wear the burqa to preserve their honor and avoid prying eyes. In society, Arab women are only allowed to bare their faces, and not always completely, mostly just their eyes. And also their hands and feet. That is why their traditional clothing is as close as possible. The burqa should be made of thick fabric, conceal the figure and not tight around the body, it cannot be soaked in perfume. It is a sin for a woman to go out without a burqa. In Saudi Arabia, if a woman removes her burqa, she commits adultery. In public places, the girl should always be accompanied by a male representative, a husband, brother, or other relatives. Many Europeans are very curious about what Oriental women look like when they take off the burqa. They are no different from any other woman. They are both beautiful and ordinary, well-groomed and not so well-groomed, each with her peculiarities in appearance. Women wear such closed clothes also to emphasize their ethnic and religious affiliation, so you can distinguish a Muslim from a representative of another religion. However, despite such bans on clothing, Arab women are very fond of buying fashionable brands of shoes, clothes, lingerie, and cosmetics. This gives them the right to consider that they take good care of themselves, although their beauty is hardly visible to anyone. Usually, such covered clothes cost a lot of money, because they are sewn from expensive fabrics. But this applies mainly to the lives of rich Arabs, the poor dress very modestly. Arab women's makeup is mostly eye makeup, and they always wear makeup in the evening when their husbands come home. At home, alone with her husband, an Arab woman can wear absolutely any clothes. After all, it is believed that the best is meant only for her man. At home, husbands see their wives in all their glory. Unlike Europeans, an Arab woman will never wear an old bathrobe or torn jeans at home. Muslim women buy their best clothes only for the home, for their husband, to be admired by him and not by the rest of society. Outside the home, Oriental women must cover their bodies with loose clothing and hide their hair and sometimes their face, as in Yemen and Sudan. The old tradition there is very pronounced, women must wear black hijabs revealing only their eyes. The only country where girls can wear European clothes in Kuwait, closed robes in the East are considered a symbol of purity, modesty, and chastity, which for girls and women are considered true virtues. In Eastern countries, where patriarchy still prevails, girls live by strict rules and are almost completely deprived of legal rights. Marriage for love is a relatively recent phenomenon, but still, half of all marriages are arranged by parents. Very often class and financial equality are put first, and the bride and groom do not even know each other until the wedding day. Recently, however, a girl has begun to have the right to reject a proposal if she does not like the groom. It is not uncommon for marriages arranged by parents to turn out happy. In Arab countries, instead of flowers, men buy their wives jewelry and expensive clothes to express their feelings for them. The more a husband loves his wife, the more jewelry he gives her. There used to be a tradition that if a husband decided to divorce his wife, she would leave home with only what she was wearing. That's why women carried all their jewelry with them. Nowadays, this is a thing of the past because when a couple gets married, they make an agreement between themselves that provides all the protections both spouses can get in advance. It is also important that the spouses be of the same faith. If a man chooses to marry a Christian or a Jewish woman, nothing will interfere with his choice. But if the woman does, her family and relatives will have the right to disown her. Traditionally, women's and men's weddings are celebrated separately. A man's wedding is limited to a modest tea party with friends. For the bride, 
a wedding is an occasion to show off in front of the other girls in diamonds and expensive designer clothes, and only women attend. In Arab countries, men have the right to polygamy. However, it takes a lot of money to support women and children. Each of the wives must have her own house, and none of them must be neglected. Therefore, only the rich can afford polygamy. If a wife finds that her husband spends more time with another woman than with her, she has the right to file for divorce. This is why monogamous marriages are common in Arab countries. Sultans and sheikhs are the only ones who can afford to have several wives. However, if a man decides to marry a second time, the first of his wives will be considered the chief wife. Oriental women must submit to the will of their husbands and accept a new wife. The wives rarely communicate with each other and live in separate houses. Divorce is very difficult for Oriental women. They can do it mainly in two cases, either if the husband himself wants it, or if he cannot provide the woman with a decent life. In these cases, the court is quick enough to hear the case and meet the woman's needs. Many things that come naturally to us, such as voting at the polls and driving, are luxuries that Arab women cannot afford. Nevertheless, under pressure from European countries, the authorities recently changed their laws. But societal norms have remained the same, so a woman at the polling station is still openly condemned by many people. In addition, society does not approve of women receiving an education. Most girls are educated as teachers or psychologists, and this is mostly for show. If a girl is from a rich family, they try to send her abroad to study. There are many illiterate women in Arab countries. For example, in Jordan, 15% of women cannot read or write. But there are also countries where women can fulfill themselves. For example, in the UAE and Algeria, where the standard of living is higher, girls can choose any specialty and then get a job in that specialty. Only in the UAE, which is considered the richest and most developed country in the East, girls can work on an equal footing with men. In the rest of the Arab countries, they can only take care of the home and children. The life of Arab women is complicated and ambiguous. It is a life with its laws and rules, sometimes not very fair, which Oriental women take for granted.